Hi everyone, I'm Deb Holland, a proud member of the Pueblo of Laguna and representative for New Mexico's first congressional district. I'm grateful for the opportunity to join all of you for this year's Native American Contractors Association membership meeting and conference. This past year has been a struggle for Native communities across the country. And though we couldn't gather for this meeting in person, I'm happy to know that the Native American Contractors Association continues their important work virtually. I'm pleased to report that in the 116th Congress, two of my bills that increase economic opportunity and prosperity for tribal entrepreneurs and tribal governments became law. First, the Native American Business Incubators Program Act, which was introduced in the Senate by Senator Tom Udall, while I led it in the House. And it works to increase access to capital for business investment and growth. The law creates three-year grants to business incubators with ties to tribal communities, education institutions, and other organizations to expand assistance to a broad range of business sectors and incubation methods. And the Bipartisan Progress for Indian Tribes Act a bill that aims to uphold the government-to-government relationship and fulfill the trust responsibility that the federal government has with tribal nations by improving the Indian Self-Determination and Education Assistance Act so that tribes have the ability to exercise their inherent right to self-governance by giving them the responsibility to administer programs, services, functions, and activities that were traditionally managed by federal agencies. This pandemic has laid bare the disparities that have existed in Indian country for too long, and the work Native American Contractors Association does helps tribes to harness those opportunities and build economic prosperity to combat the disparities. The Biden-Harris administration got off on the right foot to help this work by signing an executive order that will ensure the federal government takes an all-of-government approach to equity and does not perpetuate the racial injustice that has caused disparities that have put our communities at greater health and economic risks during this pandemic. I want to thank all of you for the work you do, and I hope all of you enjoy the rest of this year's conference. Thank you again.